everybody, this is Amin. And this is Alex. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about chargers and cables. So in our previous episode, um, we talked about the iPhone 12. And one of the biggest issues that a lot of the new iPhone 12 owners are going to have is that the charger does not come in the box. And that opened up like a discussion on okay, what kind of chargers and 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 cables and and you sh- uh, that you should get. So obviously, um, to the uninitiated, a uh, USB port is a USB port is a USB port. Everything is the same. But actually, there is a lot of different charging standards and different charging cables and and whatever not. Uh, that can really confuse people. Even we who do this on a day-to-day basis are still confused when it comes to charging. There are different standards and different adapters and different charging speeds and different ports and and heads and everything. So we uh, are going to try and break it down to you on what kind of chargers do what for which phone and what and which you should get to save your money. All right, so. Before uh, uh, before we go into like the the deeper details, we want to break down uh, the basics first. So number one is that what is a volt, what is an amp, and what is a watt. Uh, I don't even okay. So for me, like the basic thing is uh, volt times amps, you get watts. So if you think of water, like uh, uh, sorry, water. Blah. If you think uh, if you think of, uh, uh, of electricity like water. For me, that's uh, that works for me because it's easier. But I don't know which one is which, which one's volt and which one is watt and which one is amp. So, uh, what do you mean? As in the definition? Uh, yeah, yeah, <coughs> the definition. So, what is basically the power, the yeah. power output? Mm. So, amp is actually the current, and then volt is actually the the how you call it the electronic force. Yeah. So, yeah. if you think of it like water, right? So, what is like the pressure that you get from the water? Uh, the other one, uh, the force, uh, was it? Is it the force? Amp. Amp is the current. Amp is the current, right? Mm. It's how fast it goes, right? Because we think of mm. pipes, right? Okay, uh, follow follow my analogy. The the bigger the pipe, so it's either you have a big pipe with slow pressure, and then you have low force, or you have a small pipe with high pressure, and then you have a high force. Yeah. So it's something like that. But what you need to know is that. Um, volts times amps is watts, and what you need to focus on is watts. And one example is like a 10 watt charger. Yeah. So how you get that? Normally it's five volts times two amps, and you get 10 watts. Yeah, there's different variations. Mm. Uh, like uh, f- uh, for example, 45 watts. Okay, I'll, I'll find a, a round number. 45. Can we do 45? So yeah. 45. It's uh, 10 10 volts times uh, 4.5 amps, uh-huh. and of course it depends on various. Uh, charging standards. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's how you do the math. Yeah. yeah. So there are there are different um, speeds in terms of how you charge. So, but what you want to remember, what you wa- what you need to know when you're looking for a charger is the total wattage, the output. Okay. It's gonna get confusing right now. Wattage is the total output, but sometimes fast chargers require a specific voltage to get a specific output. For example, Samsung's fast, uh, what is it called? Samsung adaptive. adaptive fast charging 2.0 standard pushes out a total of 45 watts. And that's one of the fastest, uh, it's, it's pretty fast in terms of fa- uh, charging standards. But to get that, you don't get any old 45 watt or 100 watt charger. You need to be able to supply 10 volts at 4.5 amps to get 45. No other uh, variations in terms of volts and amps will give you that 45 watt that you need for the Samsung Adaptive Fast Charging. Okay, I I don't know how to do this. I think I'm get even when I'm saying it, it's getting confused. Um, how do I break this down? How do I, how do we do this? Uh, okay, fast charging. Not all fast charging are the same. There are different standards. Uh, the most common for me is, Alex, you can correct me if I'm wrong. The most c- common for me is Qualcomm's uh, Quick Charge. So the latest variation is Qualcomm 3.0. 4.0. 4.0. Four point zero. Yep. And then uh, there's um, Huawei's Supercharge. 
There's Oppo's VOOC, which is also similar to OnePlus's Dash Charging, Dash, and Realme's Dart. Dart. Yep. Uh, and then and then we have USB PD, uh, fast charging, and within all this, there are like a lot of different standards. So what the point I want to make today is that. If you look at the charger and it has a port and it's a port that fits your cable, it doesn't mean that it it's it it will charge your phone the best way that you that your phone should be charged. So it depends on on phones, it depends on on chargers. And right now because the uh, phones have like uh, fast charging and you want to be able to make the most out of uh, the the fa- uh, the charging capability that that you have a lot of phones now can charge up to fifty percent or eighty percent in less than thirty minutes, and that's a very good and and that's a very good uh, convenience to have. The problem is if you do not have the compatible charger and cable, you're not going to be able to get that. All right, so we're gonna break it down in terms of uh, what the stand what standards are available right now. So. You, do you want to break it down? Can so okay. I think the the most common one like we started off is the uh, Qualcomm's Quick Charge. Yep. That's apparently like the the most common standard because I think when most Android phones were were available like uh, five six years back, that mm. was like the de facto quick uh, fast charging standard. Yeah. Before people were <coughs> developing their own fast charging standard, everybody reverted to using Qualcomm because you know they use Qualcomm chips. Yep. And then might as well just use Qualcomm charging standards. And then? and then that I think initially was like 10 watts so 10 watts was considered fast charging back yeah, then yeah. now we just consider, consider it normal. as slow, normal, actually slow, slow charge yeah, yeah. then eventually they evolved to uh, version 3 uh, that comes with I think 18 watt uh, yep, output 18 which watts. is faster mm-hmm. and then and then eventually it gets even higher and higher yeah. but along the way I think a lot of uh, manufacturers like like uh, uh, Huawei mm. Oppo Vivo they find it you know this too slow we want to progress the fast charging even higher, yep. so we get companies like Oppo when they introduced VOOC fast charging. Mm-hmm. That was one of the first. I think it was pushing like 20, 20 over watts. Mm. So that was one of the first. And eventually, each manufacturer come their own standard. Mm. So Huawei have their own supercharge as well, which now I think it pushes about forty or fifty watts. And I think when it comes to the common standard right now, the most popular uh, protocol would be USB PD, mm-hmm. because we are seeing this being adopted by Apple with their latest range of devices. Mm. Uh, same goes with Samsung. So Samsung is, in a way, they're ditching the adaptive fast charging, so they moved to USB PD. Mm. So if you notice right now, most of the uh, Samsung flagship phones, even the mid-range phones, like the Galaxy M series, they're using a USB-C charger. So what, what I mean by USB-C is that, uh, normally on the charging brick, typically you get like a USB-A port, like this over here, USB-A port. So now, most of them are bundling this, like a USB-C port on the charger. Mm. So you need to have a C2C cable. Mm. So that's like a common sign that this is a USB PD charger. Mm. And it, this is also the similar standard as what you get on most laptops today. Like if you have any new laptops that use USB-C charging, uh, most likely it's a USB PD, same as Macs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so you, okay, first, uh, before we go further on this, those who are wa- uh, listening to the show on, on, on podcast, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, we have like a lot of uh, stuff that we are showing on screen so if you're listening to the show on podcast come over to to youtube and watch the show uh on our channel sorry chincha tv so that you get a better picture of what we're showing in terms of the ports and stuff like that and it's good that you mentioned about usb c uh because that's like the standard of the future so um usb c is is going to be is going to be common so like uh a couple of years back, you see uh, laptops and phones and uh, accessories like power banks all having different type of USB heads. But moving now in 2020 and f- uh, and beyond, a lo- uh, all I think a, a lot of the uh, equipment or, or all of the equipments are going to electronic equipments are going to move to USB C as a standard. But again, that that makes it even more confusing because while the ports all look the same, they do not perform the same way. The capability of USB C is like super wide. Uh, the cables can deliver data only, and they can deliver data and cab- uh, and power, and they can deliver de- deliver data and power at a higher rate. So so to add a conf- more confusion to this charger cable and and power standard. You have number one. You have to be uh, aware of what is the uh, power uh, input that is requ- input and output that's required for your phone and your charger. So let let's say if it's a uh, um, 
Samsung Galaxy Note 20 mm-hmm. it supports 5, 45 watts yeah. right 45 watts okay so let's say that we take that for example so you need to find a compatible charger that can deliver 45 watt in the PD standard, standard. And you need a PD cable to be de- to be able to deliver that. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you will be like super confused. So you, the questions that we're, we're going to try to answer is like, okay, is it safe to get like um, aftermarket adapters, or should I get original adapters? Um, and and how should I charge my phone? Should I, should I charge it overnight? Should I charge it like uh, once in a per- period per- when I can? Like just plug it in for five minutes and then you know unplug it and, and go somewhere else. What is the best way to charge it? So we're going to try and we're going to try and attempt to answer all those questions in this episode. So we've broken down chargers and standards and cables and and wattage. You know now we now we'll go to the nitty gritty. So what we have on the table right now are like different different chargers. So this is this is a MacBook Pro MacBook 16 Pro charger and Different, and it gets confusing because different MacBooks have different chargers. Uh, the normal, the MacBook 14, MacBook Pro 4, uh, 13. sorry, 13, uh, uses a different charger because it takes a different wattage. So I think the MacBook uh, the 13 takes 65 watts, so 62 somewhere there. The MacBook 16, MacBook Pro 16 takes 96 watts. So the question is, can I use this to charge a MacBook Pro 13? Yes, you can. But can a MacBook Pro 13 charger charge a MacBook Pro 16? Maybe not. Yes, it can, but not in the full speed. Oh, really? So yeah. it takes it takes longer. It lah. takes longer, and some the worst case scenario is that all it does is just to reduce the discharging rate. Yeah, it depends yeah. on the it, de- it depends on what you do. So let's say you're doing like heavy editing. There's a lot of processing on your MacBook uh, Pro 16. You might not be able to deliver enough power to charge. So, okay, why why do I show this? Obviously, this is the largest brick you can get, and why I'm showing this is because okay, this is the this is the charger that I use right now. I'm using a MacBook Air. the The capacity for this is the the charging requirement for this is about 30 watts. Of, I I got it up to 45 watts. Uh, I have a power meter that shows how much uh, power uh, that uh, the laptop is charging. So I got uh, this. This is a gun charger. It's it supplies 65 watts in various uh, voltages to support the various standards that we talked about, and it has multiple ports. So the the reason why I wanted to show this is that if you're looking for an aftermarket. Uh, power uh, adapter to charge your multiple devices uh, my recommendation is not to go for whatever that uh, the manufacturer the brand is supplying uh, I think almost all of the brands whether it's Apple or Samsung or Huawei or Oppo or OnePlus they they will charge a premium for the adapters uh, let's go down to prices this one for example I don't know but I think this is more than a hundred bucks I think 200 plus Yeah, yeah, two hundred bucks, uh, and then we have the late the fast charger, right? Like so, for for example, this is a standard USB A charger. It doesn't. It's not a fast charging adapter. This is for this is what you get in the box for the older iPhones. I think up to iPhone eleven. And this is probably the worst charger you can get right now in the yeah, market. Yeah, this is the slowest charger you five can get watts. right now in the market, and it's yeah. about what? 100, five watts. It's about hundred ringgit. It's about hundred thirty ringgit. This is a hundred thirty ringgit. The premium is is way too much. And and the cable you buy from Apple is also like super expensive. So what we're trying to say here is that you are going to need multiple chargers and adapters because you're gonna charge at home, you're gonna charge in the car, you're gonna charge in the office, you're gonna charge in the coffee shop. What if you're doing that? We're gonna try and help you to choose the right charger for for your needs, right? So don't buy from uh, from the manufacturer. This one, for example, this is a uh, 18 watts. Yeah, 18 watts. So this is 18 watts for uh, iPhones. Well, it can charge Samsung and Oppo and all other Android devices that support USB C charging. PD. Ah, uh, USB C PD charging. The, even non PD, it can support, but you're not going to get the maximum speed. And and so for 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 iPhones to get the maximum speed, you need to get this charger and the compatible cable. And this cost. Well, right now this is 18 watts. So previously was going for about 130 bucks, mm-hmm. but now with the newer 20 watt charger, it looks the same, but mm-hmm. it's higher 20 watts. It's going for 99 ringgit. 
Yeah, still still expensive because uh, okay, I'm gonna just take a look at the price for I paid for my 65 watt uh, gun, gun charger. charger. Yeah. So this is the base US. How do you pronounce that brand? Basus. Basius. B A S E U S. Uh, gallium gun fast charger. So gun is uh, gallium nit nitride. Nitrate. nitrate. It's a, a type of semiconductor. It's uh, I don't want to get into details, but it's better than silicone in terms of uh, conducting electricity. So it's more efficient. It allows for a smaller footprint in terms of uh, the charger size, and also it allows um, the charger to be more powerful, but uh, smaller and more efficient. And so, more cooler as well. Um, I think a lot of people will argue that I don't know, uh, it's it's a lot of people argue uh, say that they are worried because the gun charger is super hot. But I think it's because it's smaller. Okay. Uh, so the heat dissipation is not good. But I've I've been, I've been using this to charge my MacBook Air, uh, my iPhone, and also my uh, Galaxy S twenty Ultra, and I'm I, I've been and I'm very happy with this because it supports all the standard. So for this one, I paid a hundred and thirty seven ringgit, and you can see. So this one again, Alex, how much was it again? Oh, sorry. Uh, this one, right? Okay, eighteen watt. Uh huh. Uh, it's not available right now. Last time it used to be 130 bucks. Now mm. you can get it the 20 watt version for 99 ringgit. So 20 watts non gun. Uh, I can argue that it's smaller and it's a single port, and it costs half the price of this. And the thing is, this one only can charge like one device, maybe a phone. But yeah. this you can charge not just a phone. You can also charge a laptop. Yeah. Okay. And then why why do we have all these uh, all these adapters here? This is a 65 watt. PD charger. Uh, PD charger. That's for uh, the Huawei. This is for the Huawei MateBook. Uh, MateBook. And if you notice, it uses USB-C. So uh, USB-C is the future. If you're getting a laptop or a phone or a power bank or even a car, uh, look for ones that support the USB-C standard because it is uh, it's going to be compatible for a lot of things uh, in the future. So this one again is similar, 65 watt, same uh, volt, uh, same wattage in terms of the output. Supports PD, so I think it can charge a lot of devices pretty quickly. Um, but it has only a single port. And so look at the size. And, and it's you know much it's, bigger. It's heavier as well. Yeah. What I'm trying to say here is that if you're going to buy an aftermarket uh, power adapter, you need to, number one, look at what is the charging requirements for your devices. So obviously, most of you are not going to have one just one device uh, you're going to have multiple device so if an example you are like me at least have one phone and one laptop right you need to know what is the wattage uh, requirement for your laptop so for this for example i need at least 35 watts uh, for my galaxy s20 it supports i think up to so this is ultra it supports up to 45 watts so i need to buy a charger that can supply more than that so at least at least the same or more than that so this is perfect for me. It's 65 watts. And then you look at the, the problem is with multiple ports. So with multiple ports, you need to look at the, um, the, the total output for the ports itself. Sometimes, uh, if you look at the spec sheet, if you go to Lazada or Shopee, if you look at the spec sheet, they will tell you, okay, this charger is 65 watts. The problem is they do not separate the ports. So they calculate the total output of all the ports to be 65. The problem with that, you gotta at best split the the power across three ports. Yeah, it's also shared because sometimes, right, yeah, you can support 65 watts. When you plug to a laptop, yeah, you can charge full speed. But the moment you plug other ports, right, mm. then you notice you're not getting full speed because it's shared. Yeah. Yeah, so you yeah. gotta see the maximum output for each individual port as well. Yeah, so the reason why I bought this one is it's very, it very clearly indicated the power output of all the ports and also calculates for you the power outputs of the ports if you're using all of them at the same time. So I'm going to try and read uh, the outputs here. Okay, so if I use um, all three ports, I'm going to get a total output of 60 watts. So the first, the two USB C, uh, USB -C ports up here will, will supply 45 watts together. And then uh, the USB A will be 15 watts. So it's more than enough for me. I, I don't actually even use the USB A. I, I choose this one is because the USB A is kind of like for emergency purposes. And even if you go to Lazada and, and, and Shopee, there are uh, much uh, more powerful chargers available than this at the moment. Uh, right now, I've, I've already ordered a 120 watts charger. 
from the same brand, uh, uh, Buzz Use, Best U- Base US or whatever. So that's that's probably going to supply more power. I don't have the specs uh, right now with me, but what I'm trying to say is, number one, if you're going to get a, a aftermarket adapter, look at the total power output that the adapter can supply. If it's a multi-port, look at the single, look at each port and how much power that they can supply. See if it meets your requirement. Then look at your charging requirements. Do you usually charge one device uh, most of the time, or do you need to charge multiple devices most of the time? How do you find? Uh, how do you? You know what is your charging habits? For me, most of the time, I just charge my computer. My phones don't really need charging for, uh, throughout the day. Sometimes they do. So uh, once in a while, I will use both ports, but it's fine. Uh, it can still charge my Mac, and it can still charge the phones. The phones that I have, not really a problem. Uh, the best thing is if you have a dedicated power output for each port. So the reason why we have okay, this is something I wanted to show you as well. This is uh, this is probably the world's most powerful power bank. It's from it's from a company called Charge ASAP, um, and it has a capacity of twenty thousand milliamp hour. That's nothing. Uh, that's normal. Uh, I think most chargers have that. In fact, most chargers are limited. Most sorry, power, power banks. banks are limited to that battery capacity because I think 20,000 milliamp hour is the only capacity, is the maximum capacity allowed to be taken into flights. Any bigger, you have to check it in. The reason why I like this uh, power Wait, bank is sorry, because... it can't check in. 20,000. Power banks cannot check in at all. Power banks cannot check in? Yeah, most of Oh, batteries, I'm sorry. It mean yeah. Batteries. Uh. Power banks in general, you cannot be... But you cannot take batteries more than 20,000 milliamp hour yeah. into, in, in a flight. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. Okay. So that's the maximum you can take in a flight. Um, the the reason why I like this power bank is because okay, you can see it has four ports. It's multi-port. It has USB A, the square one here, ports for ba- for you know older devices. That's good. And then it also has USB C ports, and which is good too. And then it also has wireless charging. I like this because the ports have dedicated power outputs. So one port pushes out dedicated 60 watts and another port pushes out a dedicated of 100 watts. So if you remember the, the numbers that I've been talking about just now, right? The MacBook Pro 16, one of the most power hungry computers you can get because it has like a really high end processor and everything and it needs 96 watts. This power bank can charge the MacBook Pro 16. It can replace this big adapter if you're in a plane or in a car. And at the same time, it can charge this laptop because of the dedicated power outputs of the ports. It has a total output of 210 watts, more than enough for you to charge anything that you have on the table. Obviously, this is not available in, in Malaysia as, as, a, as, a, as a thing that you can buy uh, off the shelf. You need to order this online. We'll have a details about this in, uh, in the description and also have a review on Sojinja.com soon so check that out now, the reason why i wanted to point this out is that okay you need the dedicated power uh, dedicated power output if you have multiple port adapters but there's also another thing and the thing is safety yeah because of course there's a lot of aftermarket uh, chargers and power banks in the market mm. so which one is, which one should i buy you know mm. because a lot of people are, are a bit cautious that you know if you buy the wrong thing the, your phone might explode yeah. or you can can burn down your house and all that so mm. How do they, you know, make a decision decision on which charger should they go for, mm. especially third parties? Yeah, so for me, I do my research. Uh, I stick to the reputable brands. So, uh, uh, Ugreen is a reputable brand that I buy a lot of stuff from. Uh, Base US, although I don't know how to pronounce their name, they are very reputable, and and I have a lot of stuff from them as well. Those are the two uh, two brands I point out because they are reputable and they offer very good value for money. Uh, accessories and and charges and everything. Then there are other brands like the McDodo la, the Tronsmart, Tron Smart, Anchor. Penang, uh, Pine- Penang, Penang, Anchor. Anchor. Yep. Those are reputable also, but from my research, I feel that they are they are their products are not so high end. Like gun chargers, I don't think I can get it from any any other brand right now uh, at the time of this recording uh, in Shopee or Lazada. Uh, Anchor makes them, but they are more focused on like America, so their pr- their their items are like super expensive for for me. Um, and then you know, f- uh, 
the what other brands? Uh, the Strong Smart, Anchor. There's also Belkins as well. Yeah, Belkin is kind of like in between. So then they're, they're not as expensive as Anchor, but they're not as good value for money as, again, U Green and and Base US. So my if you ask me, my go to would be these people. Then the question is, uh, stay away from really unknown brands. If you're buying them online, do your research. L- look at the reviews and the comments and everything. If you don't feel too good about it, don't buy it. Better still, come over to our community. We have uh, a community, a page, on a group on, uh, on Facebook. It's called RKMD, where we provide uh, recommendations and advice on things to buy. Uh, if you have any t- tech-related questions like what laptop to buy, what power bank to buy, what power adapter to buy, you should check out that group. It's called RKMD. You should join that and, and ask questions there. Um, is there anything else that I'm missing? Oh, yes, of course, mm-hmm. uh, cables. So we talked about cables and, and not all cables are the same. Obviously, nowadays you want to get USB-C cables, that's correct. But USB-C cables, there are different formats as well. So there's the USB-A to USB-C. Yep. That's the older ones and that support, that is, div- uh, that is for maybe the older chargers where you have the USB-A. For those of you, of those of you who are not aware, USB-A is this, this square one, the ones that you commonly see any wall port or any charging port at a airport or at a hotel or at a Starbucks will probably have this. So most uh, new phones right now and most laptops support USB-C. So you probably need to get a USB-C to USB, sorry, USB-A to C charger, uh, uh, cable. The thing with that is that cable is not much uh, of variation uh, because the power that is pushing out is very small. But, then, but it depends though, because I need to add that um, some manufacturers like with the proprietary charging standards, like mm. for example Huawei, mm. uh, even I think Oppo, mm. uh, they still stick to USB-A. Mm. And how they differentiate themselves is that the color at the end of the cable, mm. some they have purple, some they have green, some they have orange. At the end or inside the... Inside the, the In, inside the, the charger as uh-huh. well as on, on the cable as well. The yeah. tip is a, bit, is a bit different. Yeah, yeah. so... I, for, uh, for me, I would like to like simplify everything. So that's why I've shifted from USB-A f- for whatever standards, I've shifted to USB-C completely. Now we come to USB-C. So we talked about the USB-C to USB-A uh, cable just now. Now we have this. This is the USB-C to USB-C cable. So both ends are the same. You can plug both ends to either the charger or the adapter. It doesn't matter. And the good thing about USB-C is, you know, up or down, it doesn't matter. You don't have to look. You just plug it in and it works. This one I mentioned earlier, there's different. There's a USB-C that can only do power, USB-C that can do power and data, USB-C that can do high power and high data. And if you're going to buy chargers, uh, my, uh, sorry, buy aftermarket cables and chargers, um, my tip is get the most powerful uh, cable output you can get for whatever your budget is. For example, for this one, uh, it says uh, here, I don't know whether you can see it, but this is a 100 watts. So it's rated to deliver power at 100 watts. So if you can remember, I have a charger that can only deliver 65 watts and I have a cable that can deliver 100 watts. I'm good. So that means at the best case, I can get the maximum output from my adapter using this cable. So if you're going out to buy aftermarket um, charger and cables, just take note of these things. Obviously, you can buy direct from um, brands like you know Apple, uh, dedicated uh, cables like this. But I, I would stay away from them because uh, the the price is just too expensive. And not just that, the quality for not only for Apple cables, they are quite quite bad, like. Yeah, it I mean, last. if, if yeah. you are an Apple user, right, you notice that the the head, the kepala, right, this part will break uh, very often, and, and you have to get a new one. And they're short, so um, the problem is if you have okay. So my my consideration when buying uh, aftermarket chargers and adapters is also the length of the cable itself. So I have different um, charging setups. Uh, at home, I have a desktop charger uh, with with like a different uh, different ports, uh, USB C and USB USB A. So it's at my desk. So for that, my cable length is short. So one meter is enough. But for for when I go out and about, when I'm working outdoors or at a cafe or just in this office, uh, I use this and I use a two meter cable because sometimes the plug point is far away from the desk and you need that length and most of the time the uh, 
brands, they supply you with the shortest cable length they can to cut costs. So you have to again ask yourself, am I going to use this cable to charge my computer as well as my phone? So if it is, then you're going to need, uh, uh, my recommendation is to get a 2 meter cable and rate it for 100 watts. Obviously, if you're, if you're electric, uh, you, do, you know electric, you know that the longer the cable, you know, the, there's some deterioration and stuff like that in terms of the output, but with 2 meters, 1 meter is fine. And then also, I look at uh, the type of head. So uh, at home, for my MacBook Air, I have a charger with a head that's like a like a like L shape. L shape. Yeah. Okay. Because, because for that, uh, I like it to be flush. Uh, it doesn't protrude out as much. But I don't like it on my phone because uh, it, it it will make the cable jut out at a different angle. And so when I'm using it while charging, I, I don't prefer that. So for my out and about, this is the cable I use, and all my devices support USB C. So I'm I'm happy. I'm done. It's like super efficient that way. So if you plan to buy a cable for your iPhone, just make sure that it's MFI certified. So MFI stands for made for iPhone. So you can get a lot of third party cables mm. out there. Like my personal favorite is a uh, Zimi, ZMI. It's actually like a sub brand from Xiaomi. So they make pretty good cables for iPhone. And I like it because they, they are braided and oh. they have like a reinforced rubber tip at the end. Mm. So that actually makes it more durable. Mm. And that costs like maybe less than 80 ringgit compared to iPhone. Even get the, the cable like this, it probably cost you like 129 ringgit. Huh? Really? Yeah. yeah so it's the quite USB C to Lightning. Yeah. So it's quite pricey. 130 bucks. 129 ringgit. We can get, get it cheaper, you get a shorter version because they come in multiple lengths. I think the shortest is like 50 cm or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So you can go out and fi mm. find the third party one. And mm. To make sure that it's really legitly MFI, uh, Apple actually has a website for you to key in the name of the product. Yep. So you can actually check whether it's really legit MFI certified. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, MFI is a good tip. Uh, okay, uh, even if manufacturers sell you short uh, cables, don't buy them because the problem is uh, even if you're using a power bank, use a long cable. Use at least a 0.5 meter cable or 1 meter cable. Because you, when you plug a shorter cable, right, and you're holding the power bank and the phone together, right, the the the, the cable is gonna like uh, move around like that, and the problem is it's gonna start becoming loose. The cable loose, no problems. You can buy a new one. The problem is the port. You have to juggle the port. If the port broken, rosa, it's it's gonna cost you a lot to to fix. So, uh, th that's another pro tip. I personally don't like to charge my phones and my devices using a power bank. The reason why I have this is because it's just the most powerful power bank in the world. So, I like having that <laughs> for that novelty. Um, but even if I do, it's, it's going to be static uh, at a desktop and not move around because I don't want to rosakkan my port. Okay, I think we've answered all the questions. The other thing that uh, we want to share with you guys when it comes to charging is charging habits. So a lot of questions that we get is, okay, do we, should we charge overnight? Is it safe to charge overnight or how, how should I charge my phone? Um, okay, I, I, I think th there are different, differing opinions on this, but there is also science. Uh, battery is, uh, is something that has chemical in it and you want to limit the chemical reaction to make sure that the battery it, life, the capacity is uh, retained for as long as possible. Uh, and the more cycles, the more uh, charging and discharging you, you, you make uh, in a battery cell, the faster the battery life is going to be drained. But it's not a, like a how to say, it's not a linear rule, you know, it doesn't mean that if you charge, you have to charge it all the way to 100%. That's not good for the battery either. So, so for me, to remember all these rules is quite confusing. So what I do is, I just make it a habit not to let my battery drain all the way down to below 15%. Uh, if it drains all the way to zero, that's terrible. That's bad for your battery. So at 15%, at 20%, I already start charging my battery. Also, at the same time, I don't let my batteries charge all the way to 100%. I maybe stop at 90, 95. Some tips say, oh, it's good to charge it from, from what, 20 to 80%. So that gives you a range of 60% in terms of battery capacity. It's good if you're always at your desk, but for me, it's not practical if you're moving around a lot. 
So I just make it a habit not to charge my devices overnight and I make it a habit not to let my devices charge all the way to 100%. Except for laptops. Then, the, then a lot of people ask, okay, for laptops, right, should, is it okay to leave it plugged in? So we talk about all the adapters and the capacities and the, the technologies that's available in the adapter. If you buy from a legit brand, say like the Base US or Ugreen, uh, or from Apple or from Huawei, a lot, the reason, one of the reasons why the charger is this big is, number one, is to have the conductor and everything. Number two is to have the circuitry and the chips. There are chips inside the uh, adapter and also the computer that helps, and also phones and everything, that help protect uh, the, char the phone and the charger and the cable against overcharging. So for computers, when you're using it and it's plugged in and it's charged, if it's 100% and you're not going anywhere, just leave it plugged in. Let the adapter and the computer manage the power um, intake and input and output by themselves. It's fine. It's not gonna, it's not gonna, for new computers, I know all computers with the replaceable battery, right? You leave it charging, you know, back then we were using yep. computers with the repla replaceable battery. What I do is, I'll, okay, I need to charge it, I'll charge it when it's 100%, I'll remove the battery, put it aside. Because the circuitries are not there and the battery technology are like super old. But nowadays you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, any tips you wanna share, Alex? For me, I think mm. phones these days, um, I, for me it's safe. I think it's safe to charge it the full. I always charge my phone overnight, mm. so far no issues because I think phone charging technologies come a long way and mm. they're smart enough to regulate the charging. Like when it comes to fast charging, right, uh, normally you get the surge, the, the high speed, the high power output in the first 50% and it gradually it will, it will reduce the charging rate. So like for example, if it's 30 watt fast charging, you maybe get that full speed in the first 50%. After that, it will try to reduce speed. You drop to 20%, 10%, and it could be as low as 5% until the final charge. And even on a new iPhone, uh, if you look at iOS 14, this is a feature called um, battery charging optimization. If you go to battery settings, uh, under battery health, there's something called optimized battery charging. So if we, if we enable this function, right, this will actually help to reduce the battery aging. So that increase the lifespan. So what that does is it learns from your charging habits it will charge until 80%. So the moment it thinks like, okay, you're going to get up soon, then you will resume, you will resume charging up to 100%. So this is a similar technology that is introduced by Sony back in the days, and now it's available in most phones. So that helps to preserve the battery life. Mm. And looking at this phone, right, I'm using an iPhone 11 Pro Max. So I have this for about a year now. So if you look at the battery health, right, my maximum capacity is 93%. Mm. And this phone, right, normally I just charge it overnight. Mm. So it's still pretty good, 93%. So normally most phones last for two years. So by next year, probably I get 80% of the lifespan, so it's still pretty okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, it comes down to what is convenient for you because the most inconvenient thing is not to have, is, is to have a phone that doesn't have a battery, right? Um, we can give you the advice. Like I said, you know, uh, we, we can say that, oh, okay, you, you need to charge uh, overnight or, or charge up to 80%, but it's not practical if, 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 it, if it doesn't fit how you use your phone and, and, and how, you, how you move about. Like for, because some people are like hardcore gamers and yeah, they, they want their phone plug, plugged in when they're playing games. That's fine too. You need to understand what your charging habits are, what your phone and device's capability and capacity is required. And, and then understand. What, what the episode today it tries to help explain is uh, what you need to know. So you need to know output in terms of wattage. You need, you need to know like the, what, what kind of adapters and what kind of charging, fast charging standards that are available for, for, for different brands out there. So it depends on the brands that, you, that you're using, whether it's Samsung, Huawei, Oppo, whatever, Apple. Uh, and also, if you're going to buy uh, new adapters and chargers, where you can save money. So obviously, I hope we've been able to answer all that questions for you. Uh, I think we're coming to the end of the show, of, to the episode today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. We'll be more than happy to answer that for you. And I, and you know, I hope I hope it's been it's been useful and informative. Okay. So is there anything else? Okay. For me, I think just to wrap up. Um, mm. As usual, if you want to uh, buy any new accessory chargers, uh, firstly, make sure that it's, it's according to your phone specs. Mm. So make sure that the device, the cable, and the chargers are compatible. You buy a Huawei, make sure it supports Huawei Supercharge, 
across the board, whether it's a power bank or a charger, with Oppo, make sure it supports the same standard as well. And I wanted to mention that um, Oppo, Vivo, uh, OnePlus, and Realme, they are all from the same company. So probably they have the same charging standard anyway. Mm. So of course, some of you might ask, okay, if let's say I have a phone for another manufacturer, can I use another charger for another brand? Well, the answer is yes, you mm. can charge, but not a full speed. Probably get 18 watts or the worst is 10 watts. Mm. Yeah. It depends. I mean, if the if the charging is compatible, it's, it's okay. But the problem is, I, I get, and, and, and that's a good point. And, and the reason why I like to buy an aftermarket one is it supports all of the standards. So I can use it on, on all the phones that I have. So if you're buying from, from Huawei or from Apple, for example, it's only going to support the standard that their devices support. So you're only probably going to be able to fully charge or the charge an iPhone to the full capacity, to the full speed. But if you plug it in a Samsung, yes, you're going to be able to charge a Samsung, but you're not going to be able to charge it at the maximum capacity that the Samsung can accept. So that's a very good tip. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I just want to remind everybody we're available on podcast. So if you're, if you're, you know, the show is really good on, on podcast, especially when you're commuting and driving. So listen to us uh, on all of your favorite podcast platforms. We're available there. Just search for... Sorry, Chin Chow, let's talk about and we're there. If you're listening to us on podcast, please do give us a five-star rating if it's, if it's a good show. Um, that makes us, uh, you know, uh, that puts us out there for other people to also enjoy the show. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, drop your comments, discussions, questions, feedback and how we can improve the show in the comment section. We love uh, reading those comments and uh, you know your feedback means a lot to us and, and, and we can be better because of that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. This is me, Amin. And this is Alex. And thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.